they are liars. So when the Creator sent the prophets and messengers, He differentiated them from the rest of the people. In order for you and I to know which one is a messenger of the Most High, which one is a fake one. For example, the true messengers of God, they come with the prophecies, they come with the miracles, they come with the same teachings, even though they never met each other. For example, let me just give you an example, quick one. One of the prophecies that Prophet Muhammad mentioned, that he said there will come a time, or he mentioned about some type of people, uh, a person who make up a lie in the morning, okay? In the same morning, his lies will reach far east, far west. Prophet Muhammad existed 1,400 years ago. That was impossible to happen. For someone to make up a lie, and his lie will reach far east, far west in the same morning. You know, because back in those days, to travel from London to Cardiff would take us three days. Let alone for my life, okay? Now, can we verify this speech of Prophet Muhammad if it's true or not? Yes, now in our time, make up a lie. Put it on Instagram, Snapchat, Facebook, Twitter, will go everywhere. So how men that lived 1,400 years ago prophesizing about something that we can observe? Do you know why? Because he said that the knowledge that he has is from the Creator and that we are here for a purpose and that this life is a test and one day we're going to die and we return to our Creator to judge us according to our actions. You know, if, um, have you been to Morocco? Okay. If you go into Morocco, what would you do first before going there? Check which currency they use. You're going to check that. Basically, you're going to do your homework. You're going to check every safe country, currency they use. So you will not say, when I get there, I'll come to know. No, you do your homework. Likewise, we're going to die and we're going to live this life. So we have to ask the questions. How we go here? What is our purpose of life? Why we have to die? And these questions, no one, no one have answered it in details, like the prophets and messengers, especially in the Quran. Prophet Muhammad, because he came with the last teaching, he explained to us how we got here, why we, our, what is our purpose of life, why we have to die. Have you asked these questions to yourself before? Um, yeah. Of course, no doubt. You know, you know why you have to ask this question? Because you have something called, in Arabic we call it al-fitra. Fitra means natural inclination. Naturally, you start asking about the big questions. Okay. Why am I here? What, what is my purpose? Am I just here to eat and drink and go clubbing and smoke or do or I'm here for greater wisdom? So when these questions come to you because you have something called natural recognition, likewise you sound reasoning. But those questions, as I've said, scientists cannot answer it. Where is in the Quran? The Quran says we have created you, one of the reasons, the wisdom behind it, for the purpose of to worship the Creator. Likewise, as a test. Likewise, for the Creator to implement His names and attributes. Attributes of mercy, of love, of anger, of justice, of wisdom, of highness, you know? Likewise, to recognize one another. Is that clear what I said so far? You know? Let me give you an example. By the way, firstly, before I give you an example, do you believe there is a Creator? Yeah. Okay. So now, uh, if I give you two million pounds as a gift, I say, you know what? I'm having a nice conversation with you. I'm a billionaire. Don't, worry, don't ask me why. I'm a billionaire. I have too much money. I just want to give it away. Yeah. I will give you two million pounds as a gift. What would you say to me at least? Um, thank you very much. Would you remember me all the time? Um, of course, two million pounds. Yeah. You know, you're going to have a nice car. You're going to remember Shamsi. Nice house, Shamsi. Now, I will give you two million pounds on a condition. Give me your two eyes. No go. You see? You know why? Because your eyes is more valuable than two million pounds. So why we are not grateful to the one that gave us eyes for free? You see? Yeah. You like that? Yeah. Okay. Now, this is the, that's what is Islam based upon. Islam based upon the two testimony that I should be, I should worship, should be grateful, should be thankful to my creator. The second question I will ask you, if you want to buy a gift to someone that you love, for example, your mother, your father, would you buy a gift that you love or your mother love? Your mother love. Likewise, if you want to worship the Creator, we should worship Him the way He loves, not the way we love, because the way He loves is objective. The way we love is subjective. That's why He sent Jesus, Moses, Abraham, Noah, Jacob, Ishmael, Isaac, Daniel, Jeremiah. The last of them is the Prophet Muhammad to teach us about our purpose of life. 
When you look at the teacher of Prophet Muhammad, you can see clearly this man must be the messenger of the Most High. I'll give you another prophecy. He said, Prophet Muhammad said, it will come a time when the interest, you know interest? Usually interest, yeah? Will become widespread even if you are not involved directly will affect you even if you are not involved directly with interest will affect you and this is what's happening in our time lots of us 2009 critic crunch the reason because of interest affects everyone how men that lived 1400 years ago knew about something that we can observe and we can see right now because for you and I to know this man must be a messenger of the Creator and if he's a messenger of the Creator it's better for you and I to follow him otherwise we'll be the losers is that clear you see so I can give you another one why Islam is the truth why Islam is the truth because Islam goes in line with our universal knowledge our common sense you know is universal knowledge universal knowledge naturally you know that you should worship one God there's one Creator naturally you know that for something to come into existence must have a creator naturally you know that is op oppression is wrong you see so when Allah sent the messengers especially Islam Prophet Muhammad he sent him with the legislations that goes in line with that worship one God believe all the prophets and messengers Moses Abraham Noah Jacob Isaac all of them because all of them came to call us to worship one God and when we die Islam speaks about that in detail we believe there's a life of the grave we don't know how it's from the unseen okay and there's a day of judgment when the creator bring everyone back to life to judge them according to their actions and the biggest crime against God when you turn away from God or you worship him in a way he doesn't want to worship him and we believe in Islam that if someone dies without Islam being explained to him God will not punish him we will test him with day of judgment however if Islam was explained to someone and she turns or he turns away from it then if he dies or she dies upon this belief rejecting the Creator or not worshiping him the way he wants then don't blame no one except ourselves so that's what we're here for that's why I invite you to Islam to worship the Creator to worship God who gave you life who gave you eyes and who you no doubt all of us here we want to have a relationship with our Creator we want to be grateful to him we want to be thankful to him so this is your chance here if you want to accept Islam I'm inviting you to Islam if you have any questions about Islam feel free don't worry ask any question you want as long as you don't ask me about my age so, <laughs> okay, I'm joking but ask anything please um, anything ask I think yeah um, does yeah, it make sense no, so does it make sense what I said yeah yeah um, okay what, if I ask you what is stopping you to become Muslim I think so I'm a Christian okay um, and like I agree with like so much that you've said like 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 we have this like yearning to know God within us um, and um, and we all like need to worship God and um, because sorry to cut you because you said you're Christian yes and now uh, Christianity okay uh, when you look to Christianity firstly was Jesus Christian Jesus was not Christian Jesus never worshipped himself Jesus prayed to God okay and Jesus uh, uh, prostrate when he prayed to God okay who does that the Muslims okay when uh, we look to the teacher of Jesus Moses Abraham Jesus was circumcised who does that the Muslims the Jewish do that as well okay however we look to the Christians the Christians in our time even the, uh, after Jesus they were affected heavily by the pagan Romans you see because if you notice uh, 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 Constantino or Constantine the, the leader he adopts Christianity as a faith of the state okay however he himself manipulated the teaching of Jesus you know so when you say I'm a Christian Christianity doesn't not our respect Christianity doesn't not go in line with our belief with our universal knowledge God became a baby that doesn't make any sense Sense. Okay. God let, is like three persons, and like God the Son came down as a baby. To be, yeah, to be a baby, to be a sacrifice for the sins of the people who trust. Okay, let's see. Is God perfect all the times? Yeah. God is perfect all the times. All the times? <laughs> when he became a baby, was he perfect? Um, we're not told the exact details of his childhood, but yes. I'm no, he wasn't because we know in the Bible Mary breastfed him. 
that is not self-sufficient God. God is self-sufficient all the times. God is not in need of his creations all the time. But we can see in the Bible, God who became a baby was in need of someone to change him and to feed him. That's not the nature of the Most High. That go and gets with the, you know, our universal knowledge. That's why, if you notice, I told you there's universal knowledge. Where is universal knowledge? You don't have to be Christian or a Muslim or atheist to know it. Naturally, we know it. That is Ill illogical, impossible for something to be perfect all the times and imperfect at the same time. Likewise, it's irrational to say God become a baby. Do you know why? Because by definition, God is not a human being. By definition, human being is not God. To say God become a baby, that is a paradox which doesn't make any sense and does not exist in outside reality. That's why Allah said in the Quran, stop saying that God, uh, man is a God or God is a tree. There is only one God that has not no partner and there is nothing like unto him. He's the all healing, the all seeing. So when you look to Jesus, I make it clear to you, who, who, who is the true God according to Jesus? Who is the true God according to Jesus? Blind. He's a paralyzed man, and um, the um, friends of this guy let him down through the roof. And um, the guy, and Jesus says to him, um, "My son, your sins are forgiven." And then the people around him say, "No one can forgive sins except God alone." Yeah. And Jesus says, "Yeah, you're right. No one can forgive sins except God alone." So, like the implication being that he is God. And then he says, "So that you will know that I have the authority to forgive sins, take up your mat and walk." And this guy takes up his mat and walk because Jesus has healed him because he is God and he has claimed to be God. Okay, does God need authority from anyone else? No. But Jesus said authority was given to him. Yeah. He cannot be he God. Has, he has authority to forgive sins. No, no. Prophet Muhammad said, "Who? Okay, who answered people paradise?" Pardon? Who answers people to in paradise? Um, God. Prophet Muhammad said to his companions, "You be in paradise. You be in paradise." That doesn't mean he's God. What it means that he's saying what God tell him. So Prophet Muhammad, the man came to him. He said, "You sins be forgiven." Doesn't mean Prophet Muhammad is God. Meaning that Prophet Muhammad, Jesus, Moses, all of them speak on the authority on behalf of God because they are the messengers of God. But before we move on, I ask you a question. You haven't answered our respect yet. Yeah? Who is the true God according to Jesus? Um, both God the Father and Himself, God no, the Son. Jesus said the only true God, Jesus said that, yeah? The only true God is the Father. He never said Him. He, but, so by forgiving that guy's sins and saying only God can forgive sins and also saying that He is forgiving sins, no, but we, saying, I am God. No, but he said the only true God, okay, we and Jesus said the only true God is the Father. Mm. Not the Holy Spirit, not the Son, that clearly he cannot be the same God who is uh, uh, who you claim. Because, I'll give you another one. Does God know everything all the times? Um, some, so, yes, but sometimes he voluntarily like, limits his power. When he came down to earth as a man, um, so... He limits his power? Yeah, he limits That's contradiction his power. though. He like voluntarily limits his power some other time. But it's contradiction. No, it's not. So I'll tell you why. Is God all powerful all the times? Yes, but sometimes he chooses to limit that power. But that, that, that God angers all the times. Like human form. But that God angers all the times. If you tell me I'm perfect all the times, then you say I choose to make mistake, that's contradiction. Because by definition, if you say all the times is perfect, you are negated to be imperfect any times. Mm. So if you say I'm perfect all the times, then you said willingly I became imperfect. That's contradiction. You are contradicting yourself. So you cannot say you are. Because meaning, that's why we say God has no beginning or no end. His perfection, perfect all the times. Today, yesterday, in the future, after the creation, all the times. So that's why, look, what you do in our respect? You are struggling because you believe in something in a book We go and guess your universal knowledge So what are you doing? You try to fight and guess universal knowledge Which the creator has given you to believe in a book that we don't know who wrote That's what you're doing, seriously You know, John, Mark, Luke, Matthew It's a different subject they, A lot of them wrote, wrote things about Jesus Which we don't know if Jesus said it or not You know? Jesus wasn't even Christ's name 
Yeah, yeah, that's true. That's true. No, Jesus. I think mean, Jesus yeah. did anything written so, by God. So, so no, my point here is, look, my point is, uh, my point here is that there is, when you look to Jesus' teaching, Moses, Abraham, Noah, Jacob, all of them called to worship one God. Never Moses or, Mo or Abraham or Jacob or Daniel said, believe there's three God, three in one. None of them said that. No, they all believed in Yahweh. Daniel, Daniel. They Sorry, yeah? Yahweh, right? I'm coming, yeah? yeah. Wait one second, you're here. Yeah. So do you understand that? That's why when you, what distinguishes Islam from any religion or any way of life or any ideas, Islam goes in line with our universal knowledge. Who gave us the universal knowledge? The Creator. So the Creator, to make it clear, imagine I make a phone. Oh, no one made a phone before me. And you find the phone. And I say, I made it. He said, okay, Shamsi, you made it? I say, yeah. I say, take the menu and you follow it. When you take the menu, the guideline, clearly the guideline doesn't go in line with the phone. You're going to come back to me and say, Shamsi, you haven't made it. Then you come to Muhammad. And Muhammad gives you guideline which go in line with the phone. You know, if you hold a minute, he made it. You see, when you look to the teaching of Islam, it goes in line with our universal knowledge. But when you look to the other books which claim to be from God, doesn't not go and get, doesn't go, doesn't not go in line with our universal knowledge. Go and guess it. But God is the most wise. He will not create you with something, then send something, go clear and guess it. Rather, he will create something like a Wi-Fi and a router. Connect. You see? Do you agree with that? You see? Islam, universal knowledge, goes in line with the Quran. God is perfect, shows prophets and messengers, he sent them. No God became a baby and so on. I have a question that nobody can uh, No, no, I spoke to you before. No, oh, we're we're not interested. To me yeah. What do you think was said so far? Um, I don't think there's a lot of, you a lot of smart stuff about, in there. Like but, um, just think about it. Yeah. How come Try to think to about me? it. Yeah. Study it. Read it. You because, you know, talk, all the prophets and messages. Uh, let me give you one example that Prophet Muhammad, he was not anti Christ. Shall I prove that to you? Prophet Muhammad was in Medina. Medina is a, a place where he migrated, yeah? He was defending Jesus even though he was, he was not getting nothing from it. Meaning in Medina, if he was a false prophet, he would have agreed with the Israelites who said Jesus was a bastard man, or he was, uh, 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 and he was not a, uh, was not a true messiah. If he was a false prophet, he would have agreed with them to gain more followers. But what he did, he said, no, Jesus was a true messiah. He was born without a father. His mother was a truthful woman. Why he's going to defend someone in a city when there's no need for him to defend? Rather, by defending that man, he's going to lose more followers, not to gain more followers. Because to show you Prophet Muhammad doesn't not speak from his own desires. He speaks from the revelation. Allah will send him to defend this man because he's a prophet of me, like you are a prophet of me. And both of you defend each other. See that? Make sense? Sorry, I can't check that. Oh, I'm so yeah. sorry. Why no problem at all. You know, as a Muslim, to just clarify that, we as a Muslims, we're not allowed to touch woman's hand, even from Muslims. Because I as long as she's our, yeah. if she's our relative family, yeah. we are allowed to touch her. Sure. But non-relatives, yeah, yeah, yeah just because uh, because some people they think, uh, if not a Muslim, yeah, if she's a Muslim, you're allowed to touch her. No, no, no. Even if she's a Muslim, if she's not my relative, I'm not allowed to touch her. That makes a lot of sense. Uh, yeah, yeah, I don't. Do you have anything something to give her to read? Oh. Nothing. I have nothing. But hopefully, Thank check. You Thank you very much. Uh, have you read the Quran? Do you have Quran? Yeah, give me one. Just one. I want to give you a gift, please. Because I know many prophets. I spoke to him before. Jeremiah, just gonna shout. Hezekiah, Nehemiah, Obadiah, Messiah, Hallelujah. Yeah. But he won't speak to me. I